past fatal heart impact past painful starts in fact i blast tasteful thoughts and past i back up my actions fact don't ask grab reactions jack attack with every word and act with class as they hear me snap i got nothing to lose because i fought and felt the bruise now i'm not the one confused call the shots and they produce i ain't lost i'm finally loose pick a new so bird's juice i need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used everybody wants a piece now y'all can rest in peace now you're dead to me so peace out remember you're discreet now. Get ready for Alrighty. Hello, hello everybody. This is Kiru Show here. And now, whenever we last left off with this series, we had Izugu Midoriya. And what had happened? Izugu Midoriya, during the New York City invasion, he got into a fight and a scuffle with not only the alien forces trying to invade and take over the planet, but also with the Incredible Hulk. Now, this caught Midoriya off guard by a lot. And the two actually did have an intense battle. If the incoming alien forces had not already driven away most of the inhabitants of the city, it is believed that Midoriya and the Hulk's fight could have killed a whole lot of people. These two basically destroyed somewhere around three city blocks in their battle. And if those buildings weren't already torn down or partially destroyed, they would have come down anyway. Now, we do pick up with the next day, as Midoriya does actually get up and get dressed heading out of his room, and heading down for breakfast. Now, as Midoriya does sit down at the table and begin to eat his breakfast, we actually do have quite a few of the other members of the X-Men, or Midoriya's friends and classmates. Now, with this, a few of them are staring at Midoriya, and he actually does go to continue eating his breakfast up until he finally does at least look up and begin to acknowledge everyone. Uh, hey guys. Uh, Midori, can we ask a few questions? Uh, go ahead. Everyone begin to erupt and ask multiple questions all at once. Now, with that, it's quite surprising. And eventually somebody does walk in trying to get everyone to calm down. Now, after this does actually happen, Midoriya does begin to use his powers, using his telepathic ability, and basically linking everyone together. And they actually do all begin to continue the conversation there. Being able to eat and talk is weird. However, it's not as weird as their normal lives. Now, Midoriya does answer all of their questions, even going on to explain his fight with the Hulk. The Hulk said that he was stronger than Midoriya, and apparently Iron Man probably said something that pissed him off. So the Hulk wants to do a fight. Honestly, why are we surprised? Is one of the answers that are thrown out. Now, with that, it's quite strange still. Midoriya, his reputation, is now boosted by an extreme amount. And his abilities have proven to be stronger than the Incredible Hulk. It's strange. And this could change a whole lot of things. Now, with that being said, Midoriya does go to his classes and eventually go on to his training, where today he is actually outside, and he is trying to understand his, well, infinite tendril ability. Now, he truly does not know how far it can actually go. He knows it can go a great distance, but he's still theorizing about it as he actually does just bring his hand up and begin to let his fingers 
shoot off in a different directions. At certain points, he will turn his hand, or turn his fingers, and let them just keep going. Man, keep going. Man, keep going. And eventually, Midway does understand this ability. After about two to three hours of just letting his hand move, while he is practicing on another ability, it is strange. And has proven exactly what Midori has thought. His powers just keep growing, and they get stronger and stronger. Now, since Midori doesn't want to wait for these to go back in, he actually does make a decision. He knows that the Hulk did it back in New York. So, using the palm of his hand, he twists his hand. And moves forward, grabbing the tendrils. Before tearing them. Now, Midoriya does slightly wince in pain. However, his fingers do begin to get uncovered by this ability. And Midoriya, he actually does see his fingers. As the rest of the tendrils slowly just begin to disappear and dissipate. Now. This is actually very, very strange. However, that isn't even the weirdest thing that's going to happen to Midoriya today. As Midoriya, he does head back inside after his training is done with. And he actually does get a glass of water. Now, after that does happen, Midoriya, he's in the kitchen. And he is currently at least talking with somebody, as he does set down his glass and pull his hand away, going to continue to talk to them more. However, after a second, he does hear a loud sound, like, like something made of glass hit the floor, turning his head to look at what happened. And surprise, surprise, there is a glass of water on the ground. Noise. Looking back up to the counter. His glass is still there. Now, that does confuse him for a second. As he turns to ask Kitty if there was another glass on the counter. Because he didn't see one. Hmm? No, why? That's strange. Midoriya going to grab the glass and pull it away. Or at least just pick it up. However, as soon as he actually does touch the glass again, another one does appear right next to it. And Midori does actually pull his hand back. Quite confused. Huh? What the? Um, Midoriya, what did you just... Um, I don't know. Now, this is actually very surprising. And Midoriya, he actually does go to simply put his hand into his pockets. Now, after he does put his hand in his pocket, he actually does pull out his phone. And another one does actually hit the ground, surprising him. That's a replica of his phone. Same case and everything. And it catches Midoriya off guard. Him going to actually call somebody. Now. While he is calling somebody, we do have Kitty, who does begin to run throughout the manor and try and find a teacher. As we do cut to ten minutes later, Midoriya, he tried to get into contact with somebody, and even try and see if he can call anyone. Now, sadly, Midoriya, he had the X Men teachers or the, well, members who are not in training, they were having a team meeting and discussing certain things that happened, results of the New York City invasion and possibilities that they could take to train help. Now, Kitty did interrupt their meeting and Midoriya tried calling them. Their phones are all on mute. This is very important. Nothing can come in between them or inter interrupt them right now. Until a loud thud is heard. And we do cut back to the kitchen. Everyone does walk in. And we do have Midoriya. Who is sitting down in a chair. While there's five others in the room. There's two microwaves. 
There's two fridges. And a certain amount of objects in the room have all quadrupled or possibly even, well, appear more than once. Now, at once quite confused as to what's going on. And then there is Midoriya, who does try and greet his teachers, as Charles Xavier does actually step forwards, asking exactly what has been going on here. Uh, hi, Mr. Xavier, that's kind of a hard one to explain. Hmm? Uh, please continue. But anyway, so he's just doing one thing. He grabs the face that is on the table, and he then actually does just hold it up, everyone confused. On the other side of Midoriya's hand, or his palm, another vase does form, which swiftly hits the ground. That's odd. Uh, Midoriya, what did you... Him being cut off by another vase being created, and hitting the ground again before he does this other thing down, and it duplicates again, on the table this time. And he does try and give an explanation. This started after breakfast, and he's kind of surprised by it. Everything he touches either duplicates or copies itself. He doesn't understand what's going on. Hmm. That's strange. It's not just that. I copied my phone, and him holding it up. However, this one looks like a shiny piece of metal. And it's quite interesting. Charles actually carefully taking the phone from Midoriya. As it copies again. And trying to inspect it. Now, Beast does begin to at least take samples of the objects that have all been copied within the room. And after an hour, everything is somewhat cleaned up. As we do have Midoriya sitting in the lab. His hands basically up in the air. Or at least so he doesn't touch anything else. As after a bit of time, they are able to come to a conclusion. Midoriya might have another ability. And it's actually quite strange. Now, Midoriya does want to hear about this. However, before they can, we actually do have a surprising turn of events. Two people do come walking into this lab. One being a particularly long-haired woman. And actually does surprise Midoriya. Him turning to look at her. Confused by who that is. He's never seen her here before. And then, we do have another thing that does surprise Midoriya. The person who walks in behind her, as that person is Bakugo Kotsky. Now, this catches Midori off guard. Who is that? Hmm, he looks familiar. Now, this is whenever Bakugo does at least say his name, and Midori is quite surprised, realizing who it is. Him wanting to get up and run over to hug his friend. Or at least, well, high five him. However, he mainly just does go to sitting back down once he does actually try and jump up. Now, Beast doesn't really care. Simply just telling them that he is in the middle of very important scientific research. And he has made a vast discovery in this boy's power. And to please wait outside. It's very fascinating. Hmm? Oh, please. Beast turning to look at this kid. Uh, who are you? Oh, I'm an old friend of his. Okay. And why exactly are you here? I will explain, but what's going on? Midoriya talking about how he may have unlocked another power. Or, he doesn't know. Things just started freaking out around him. Hmm. Okay. We'll just stay out here then. Now. 
after a bit of time does pass. Beast does come to somewhat of a good conclusion. And he does begin to explain to Midoriya this strange ability, or power. Now, he is then told about it. How? He can manipulate molecules. And it is only assumed that he activates this ability whenever he touches an object. The object he touched, he not only possibly copied it, but he pulled the molecules out of the air and created an exact duplicate. However, it's quite strange. The more he began to use his ability, the less components or structure was in these objects. And they were not perfect. From looking at the phone he made, or the cracked one on the ground, he found that it does work. However, its battery, it died and broke immediately. And all you had to do is simply just change it. However, looking at the other phones, they're made of different materials and have different parts and pieces in them. Especially one that is literally made of dirt on the inside. Now, this is quite strange. And Beast does continue on his explanation. Talking about how he can contact somebody and possibly help Midoriya understand his abilities. However, for right now, he is going to try and come up with something for him. Now, Beast does continue explaining what he needs to do. For right now, with his powers, or possible power, he just needs to be careful with whatever object he does touch. And if he can, him trying to suggest Midoriya do something. And Midoriya is quite surprised at the suggestion. Midoriya can make objects and creations out of darkness. Him trying to suggest Midoriya make gloves to cover his hands. And for right now, that could be a temporary solution to his problem. And Midoriya does actually try it. Now, after a second, he does have a very rough draft. Basically looking like giant blobs covering his hands. Before, after a minute of trying to focus and get them to look better, he does at least have them looking a bit more like gloves. And a bit more like leather. Now, he then actually does put his hand on an object that Beast hands him. Let's say a Sharpie. And he does not copy it. Now, Beast does actually exclaim how that is actually very good. And that is a temporary solution. Until he can get that ability under control. Because as far as he does know, him then saying out loud that Midoriya's ability could be quite catastrophic. Especially if he were to accidentally create something. Well, that could harm and injure people. Now, Midoriya, he doesn't have that register in his head, until he understands what he means. His ability to shapeshift, or manipulate, what matter can be, the atomic bonds and what they are made of. So, he could, in his mind, think about this for a second. If he wanted to, he can turn a ball of dirt in his hand into gold. He can turn a glass of water into sulfuric acid. If he wanted to, he can turn a coin into a nuclear, well, a piece of, no, what is it? I'm trying to think of the name of it. Uranium, if he wanted to. So, those can all be quite devastating. And it surprises him. He did this with nothing but pure air. So if he were to hold an object and try and turn it into something else, that's kind of terrifying. Now, after that does happen, we actually do have Midoriya, who does actually walk out of the room. And we actually have two people standing there and talking for a second. Now, 
Midoriya, he does head over. And we do have Bakugo Katsuki and Kitty Pride. Both these two talking with each other and trying to understand each other's relationship with Midoriya. Now, Midoriya, he does actually walk up and intervene. Kitty confuses to why Midoriya is wearing gloves. Him trying to explain. And Bakugo's kind of caught off guard. Midoriya can basically manipulate matter. What the fuck? Now, he actually does then bring up his fight with the Hulk. And ask Midoriya, when did he get so strong? Hmm? Oh, uh, that's kind of new. Hmm? What are you talking about? Well, uh... I've been strong before, and... Well, the first time I threw a punch, I kinda not Colossus on his ass. <laughs> You're joking, right? Kitty looking at Bakugo, and saying no. In fact, her actually then at least wrapping her arm around Midoriya, saying that her boyfriend is actually one of the strongest people here. Hmm? Wait, Midoriya, you and her are dating? Uh, yeah, this is... Kitty. What? Are you serious? That's her name? I thought she was joking. Uh, no, she's not. Anyways, um, what are you doing here? Oh, well, I mean... I haven't seen you in a long time, and... I was passing by with some people, and I wanted to see you. However, getting into this place was a lot harder than you thought. Harder than you think. Now, this is whenever Charles Xavier does actually begin to walk up. Or, well, yeah, walk up works here. Anyways, now, he actually does surprise Midoriya. Talking about how he actually was quite surprised himself. Hearing an old friend of a student was coming by. Now, Bako does actually begin talking. And he actually himself does begin to fanboy over this famous telepath. Now, it is quite strange. Looking at Bako do this. But we are basically interrupting him. Now. For the next couple hours, they would be sitting down, and actually talking. Hanging out in the game room, and basically trying to figure out what the hell's been going on. When Rumidoya gave Baku a list of his powers, Baku was quite shocked, and surprised. And we also did have something else happen. Rumidoya did begin to show them off, and basically... Take Bakugo completely off guard. And then eventually somebody did actually step in. Because they were just sitting down and hogging the TV. Laura, or X-23. She actually did ask them if they were still even watching TV. Since they're all too busy gossiping. Turning her head and seeing this strange dude. Hmm? Who the hell are you? Huh? Who are you? Oh, uh, Bakugo. Don't worry, this is X. X? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. She doesn't give away her full name. Anyways. Uh, yeah. She's basically Wolverine's daughter? Huh. Well, I don't want to say that I am. Technically, I'm a clone, but at the same time, I was born. So, whatever. That's actually pretty weird. Oh, shut the fuck up, blonde boy. Hey. Now, Laura actually does begin to talk shit with, and basically get into a bit of a scuffle with Bakugo. These two young and screaming at each other. Until Midoriya, he actually does make a deal with X-23. He knows how strong her healing factor is, 
right? Mm-hmm. So, he wants to demonstrate to Bakugo exactly how strong he is. Okay. Now, cut to two to, or probably five minutes later, or ten minutes later, let's say, to outside. And they are on the X-Men property. Now, Midoriya is standing there. And he actually is doing a little bit of stretching. As X-23 is asking if this is really even a good idea. Oh, come on. Wolverine does this all the time. Ah, <sighs> yeah, but still. You even think that you should be the one throwing me. Hmm? No, you're fine. Now. This is where Midoriya, he actually does bend down. X-23 stepping on his hands, or onto his hand, and Midoriya actually does pick her up, catching her off guard. As, Bakugo watches Midoriya throw X-23 like a cannonball. And, she actually does jump off of his hands at the same time he does this. Her being sent flying through the air. And, she actually does go incredibly high and incredibly far. And, eventually she does land somewhere. This being found out by a very loud thud. And Midoriya, he actually does take flight and go to see if she's alright. This also catching Baku off guard. Now, eventually Midoriya does find her. As, she is been thrown through a couple of trees and is currently regenerating. Midoriya asking if she's alright. To which she herself and originally can move her head, actually just trying to look at Midoriya, telling him that that was actually pretty fun and awesome. They should do that more if they team up. Hmm? Uh, alright, X? Her, after a second, jumping up. And actually putting her fist onto Midoriya's stomach, or at least onto his chest. Basically, hitting him. And saying to just to call her Laura. Hmm? That's your name? Tuh. <laughs> yeah, it is. Besides. Her then taking a couple steps. Before then saying to Midori that if he tells anyone else that that's her name, then they're going to have a problem. However, she does see him as a friend. Or at least someone that she does actually at least like around here. All these people are strange, weird, and just too friendly. Even then, they're not tough. You know what I mean? Uh, sure. Even then, you were able to whip the ass of the Hulk. Something that my dad hasn't even been able to do. Uh, alright. Good to know. Now, these two do get back. And sadly, somebody does come walking up and interrupt them. As they inform Baku that they do need to actually leave right now. And Baku goes kind of annoyed. Talking about how, but they just got here not too long ago. The person then explaining, yes, that is true. However, they do need to get back to where they need to go. And once they get there, they must find out if Bakugo is one of them. Hmm? This is surprising Midoriya. As the person does actually grab Bakugo by his hand. And the two do begin to walk away. Midoriya confused. A, rare, a red-haired woman. And, well, a very tall one. So, who exactly was that? And is she a mutant? One of them? Hmm. Wait, Bakugo possesses a quirk, so he's a hybrid? Strange. Now, this is when Romadoria's thought is interrupted. Whenever we actually do have Rogue, who actually does surprise everyone. Walking out to basically saying that, why was she here? Hmm? You know who that was? Hmm. Yes, I do. Unfortunately, I had the 
pleasure of meeting her. Uh, okay. Do you mind filling us in? Ha. <sighs> sure, why not? <sighs> that woman was Medusa. Wait, Medusa? I haven't heard of a mutant like that. It's because she's not a mutant. She's an inhuman. What? Are you serious? Midoriya having it click in his mind. Bakugo's inhuman? Him going to open his mouth. Before she suddenly does continue talking. Talking about how the inhumans have a small knack for what they do. Anytime somebody takes a test, and they believe themselves to be one of them, if the test does come back at least as a positive, even if it's a false one, they come and take somebody, and they perform their own test. Hmm. Uh, okay. But why? Well, that's easy. You see, if they don't perform their own test, you can't truly know if somebody's inhuman. Even that now. They thought I was one, once. Uh... Okay, but what happened? Well, they tested me. Whenever I got sick, but I didn't, well, get covered, they brought me here, where, ta-da, I'm a mutant. Hmm, you've never told us this before. Ah, it's never come up in conversation. But anyways, kid. Or, Midoriya, sorry. I would suggest you gotta be careful. If your friend is an inhuman... Well, don't expect that friendship to last very long. Besides, possibility is he isn't one. Those tests are always, at least 90% of the time, messed up. Outside of interference, people looking for fame and glory. Or, well... Everyone stopped looking into them after those laws got put into place. Since you have to research it in a human to properly test for it. So, I'll see you later. Her going to fly off. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing night. I will catch you guys in the next part.